Skill Platform for Entrepreneurs, Skillfront, www.skillfront.com, Program Book, The Kanban Framework, This audiobook has been generated by using the Mac OS text-to-speech technology, as Skillfront, we thank Apple for making this technology available for us, hi everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day today, thank you very much for getting the Kanban Framework audiobook, my name is Yella Zobergefell. We will be producing today the audio version of the renowned Skillfront book, The Kanban Framework, written by the team of the Skillfront. As we know, audiobooks are wonderful tools in terms of getting knowledge of the world with ease. You can feel free to listen to this audiobook while you are sitting and relaxing on your couch with your cup of coffee or tea, while you are driving, while you are commuting, while you are walking, while you are training, or even while you are working without any interruption in your usual routine. And yet, I want to encourage you to get a hand at the ebook version of the Kanban framework as well. I believe the content presented in this audiobook will make more sense, and it will become more helpful to you if you review and digest the figures, images, graphs, and charts, which you can only see in the ebook version of this audiobook. Are you now ready to get started? Yes. If so, then let's get started. Dedication to all of the skill front entrepreneurs. Thank you for inspiring us, keeping us focused and making sure we do our best to guide you to execute ideas, grow businesses, and dominate your markets online and offline. We are proud of seeing you while you serve your clients at your highest levels possible and positively influence their lives that wouldn't happen otherwise. Without you, your engagement, and your loyal support, Skillfront could not come where it is today. Welcome to the Skillfront. As to methods, there may be million and then some, but skills are few. The one who grasps skills can successfully select his or her own methods. The one who tries methods, ignoring skills, is sure to have trouble. Ralph Waldo Emerson, essayist and poet, New Year's Eve 2010. As the rest of the world went about celebrating the dawn of a new year heading into 2011, I lay in my bed, next to my baby, who was born less than four short months ago. My husband sat next to me, and I can still remember the sound of fireworks set off in the neighborhood. I could see the colors of fireworks, reflecting off my husband's face. He turned and looked at me, while tears were pouring down my cheeks, and he said, You didn't sign up for this, we're going to fix it. I lay down and put my hands back behind my head, closing my eyes, I felt every aspect of my being filled with rage. My mind raced back to the winter, nearly 12 months before, to me getting promoted to a leadership position at one of Switzerland's largest local banks. As the manager of the busiest branch in the middle of the city of Zurich, I was leading 30 to 40 employees, contractors, and agency staff. To this day, I can't help but marvel at the thousands of working hours, the millions of Swiss francs, and the enormously complex processes necessary to make a simple financial investment product shown in our portfolio of products. And yet, there I was lying, heading into 2011, with the termination letter in my hand. It turned out that my employer didn't want to occupy their demanding positions with mothers of newborn babies. They couldn't wait any longer and quickly sent me my notification at the end of my 12 weeks of officially deserved maternity leave. At this moment, you may be wondering why I didn't go back to my corporate career, although I could have reasonably quickly find another job, given my qualifications and job experiences. Even if I had this big obstacle of having a few months old baby, let me tell you this. The shock of getting fired helped me admit three very important things that I haven't been entirely honest to myself before. 1. Large companies move slowly. Good ideas often died on the vine simply because they had to be approved by too many people. 2. Climbing the corporate ladder is an obstacle to doing great work. I wanted to focus on getting things done and making things better, not constantly positioning myself for promotion. Politics and turf wars are an inescapable part of the daily experience of working for a large company. 3. Frustration leads to burnout. I wanted to enjoy my daily work experience, but instead, I felt like I was running a gauntlet each day. It began to affect my health during my pregnancy, happiness, and relationships with my husband, friends, and family. The longer I thought of these facts, the more I realized I wanted out. I desperately wanted to work on my own terms, as an entrepreneur. The next 10 years took me on a journey, trying to bring up my baby become a good wife, and transform myself into the practical scientist to unlocking measurable results in every area of my life every day. 
a scientist I call the skill front entrepreneur. My name is Yella Zobergefell. I am a married woman. I am a mother. I am a businesswoman. And most important, I am a skill front entrepreneur. I train entrepreneurs at all levels, from want to be entrepreneurs to owners of large enterprises, to execute ideas, grow businesses, and dominate their markets online and offline. I wasn't trying to become an expert. In fact, I wasn't even sure what being an expert meant. I was, and I am still trying to be a student of my own passion, helping and serving other entrepreneurs succeed in business. I wanted to set myself free after getting laid off. I had no clue that what would start with a decision to change my life would transform into a global movement thanks to the principles, frameworks, and support of Skillfront, the skill platform for entrepreneurs. I started the idea of Skillfront in 2011 with zero knowledge of marketing, sales, persuasion, closing, e-commerce, or automated digital marketing systems. On top of that, I had never delivered a service that was 100% created by me, and I had spent most of my career selling other services. From 2011 to 2014, I struggled to get the message I felt in my heart and soul out to the world. Although we were having some mild success, I was paralyzed trying to figure out not only the psychology of being a female leader with my message, but also the science and technology to sustain and scale my business. I have always been an avid learner, but before I decided to learn everything I could about how I can succeed as an entrepreneur, most of what I read was fiction. If there is one thing I am good at it, it is taking in a huge amount of information and distilling it into essentials. I am a synthesis by nature and my travels through the business literature quickly became an exercise in separating the diamonds from the rough. The more I learned, the more helpless I felt. For every great resource I found, I had to process 10 other resources to figure out how to apply that resource in practice to excel on my own entrepreneurship journey. I started to wonder, how much of what's out there, and there is a lot out there, I really needed to know. How could I separate practical business and entrepreneurship skills from the dry theory and techno bubble? I only had so much time and energy, so I started searching for a filter, something that would direct me to the useful skills and keep me away from the chaff. The more I searched, the more I realized it didn't exist, so I decided to create the skill front. As of this moment, 143,487 skill front entrepreneurs are actively using the skill front platform to quickly get their ideas, products, and services out to the world. I don't share that with you to impress you. To some of you hearing this, that is a big thing, and to others, it's nothing. I share it to demonstrate what is possible when you learn, live, and leverage the practical science and art of being an entrepreneur while combining those skills with lessons you are going to earn in real practice. So take a deep breath. It's time for you to unlock the blueprint of success as an entrepreneur and get to work. Welcome to the Skill Front. Yella Zobergefell, Skill Front. Co-founder, Vice President, Entrepreneur Experience. Become a bit better than you, every day. Before you can be great, you must be good. Before you can be good, you must be bad. Before you can be bad, you must try. Jim Edwards, copywriter and internet marketer. The key to success, model the best. During one of the seminars I attended more than a decade ago in Nashville, Tennessee, I had one of the most significant aha moments in my personal and entrepreneurial growth journey which impacted my business more than everything else I learned until today that was the discovery of thoughtful modeling to build my own skills and career. Children use modeling all the time to learn how to speak, use tools, or tie their shoes. If you look at it carefully, modeling is not only essential to build new skills, but also it's necessary for the continuity of skills, lessons, know-how, and the world's intellectual and cultural legacy from one generation to another. One caveat here, I have seen and met many people who mix modeling with copying someone else's materials, patents, works, ideas as there, and use them for their own goals. Don't do this. That is illegal and unethical. What I mean with thoughtful modeling is, 1. Look for a business that is already successful in your chosen field or a leader who has created the kind of life you want to live. 2. As Tony Robbins rightly put out there, success leaves clues. Find them. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. Those who have succeeded before you have done so, followed a plan, and you can do the same thing. Look into their history and their eyes to the top. How did they get to where they are today? What kind of obstacles and setbacks did they face, and how did they overcome them? What are their philosophies about their work and their life? 3. 
Use this information to build the path of your success that mirrors theirs. Your strategy may be similar to the business or leader you're modeling, or you adjust it for your present circumstances. So, I started looking at other businesses, studying how they came to where they're today. After all, their techniques worked for them, they could work for me, but for some reason, my efforts made very little, if any, success and income. I was frustrated because I could see others making money successfully. What was I doing wrong? It took me almost four years of studying, researching, and interviewing successful business people before I realized that what I was seeing on the surface wasn't their full arsenal of skills and strategies. The entrepreneurs who were making decent money were doing it through steps and processes invisible to the naked eye while I had learned and modeled the part of their businesses that I could see. Multiple things were happening behind the scenes that made the magic work. I found that the difference between a $10,000 and $1 million business was all the things happening after a buyer initially contacted those businesses. It took me years to discover and master these hidden skills below the surface of the iceberg, but when I did it, the results spoke for themselves. I wanted to launch Skillfront because I know there are entrepreneurs like me who have been trying to be successful, yet are not having much success. This and other skill front programs are the culmination of a decade spent analyzing thousands of companies and their success models. I have built a number of successful companies of my own, and I have worked with tens of thousands of students and clients to guide them to build businesses in every industry you can dream of, both online and offline. This and other programs in the skill front platform will unlock the practical skills and frameworks that are mastered and continuously used by champion businesses and leaders in their industries. I hope that while you're learning those skills, you will realize your dreams of success are a lot closer than you think. You will soon see that by providing a ton of value, communicating effectively with your audience, and building out your sales processes and flows in a very strategic way, you can get your product, service, and message out to the world, and you can get paid what you're worth while doing it. All skills you're going to learn are evergreen. If you've tried to learn how to build and grow your company in the past, You've probably purchased books and courses that teach systems that worked when they were created but became outdated, often, before they even reached a wider audience and found their way to you. Skillfront programs, on the other hand, are playbooks for creating and scaling successful businesses that will exponentially increase your sales and income. Skillfront teaches evergreen skills, frameworks, and strategies that will be just as useful 20 years from now as they are today. It's the mission of the skill front to focus on principles and methods that are timelines, even if technologies and tools change. We don't just teach this stuff. We actually do it. There are many people teaching business and entrepreneurship from one or another angle, and the vast majority of them are making money by teaching other people's business strategies. Russell Brunson calls those people shovel sellers because during the gold rush, the people who made the most money were the ones selling the shovels. Today's modern shovel sellers are selling you those strategies without actually using any of the techniques themselves. The difference between skill front and most others is that we actually do this for real. That's right. The skills we are going to reveal to you have been learned and then verified by our own real-world practices, or we have earned them after thousands of tests, sleepless nights, mistakes, trials, errors, successes, as well as failures. We have tried these skills in countless different industries from law practices to multinational e-commerce giants, from coaching services to software as a service providers, from physical product retailers online and offline to real estate brokers, from healthcare, fitness, wellness and leisure providers to sport clubs and educational institutions, and everything else you ever imagine in between. We also directly work with hundreds of other businesses, advising them and increasing their profitability in almost every niche and industry you can dream of. I am excited for you to dive in and have some fun with this. So, let's get started. What is Kanban? Kanban definition? Kanban meaning. Kanban takes its name from the cards that track production within a factory. It's a scheduling system for lean manufacturing and just-in-time, JIT, manufacturing. Kanban definition. In Japanese, Kanban, means signboard or billboard. Teichi Ono, the 29th of February, 1912 to the 28th of May. 1990, an industrial engineer at Toyota, developed Kanban to improve production effectiveness and decrease wastes. Kanban ended up being an efficient framework to support running a production system as a whole and an excellent way to promote improvement. 
identification of the lead time and the cycle time of a given process and its associated subprocesses, and incompatibilities among them highlight problem areas. One of the main differences of Kanban compared to other processes is that it explicitly establishes an upper limit to work in progress inventory to prevent overcapacity. Less is more to get results. Remember how the Google landing page looks like. However, as human beings, we are tempted to get trapped with complexity bias. Kanban establishes maximum limits on the number of products waiting at supply points. Afterward, the Kanban team identifies and addresses any inefficiencies in their workflow. Whenever a limit is not honored, this points to an inefficiency to be sorted out and a process improvement potential to be exploited. Therefore, it's safe to say that the primary goal of a Kanban system is to restrict the accumulation of excess inventory. The purpose of the Kanban team is to eliminate this excess inventory at any point in production. That will lead to better allocation of available resources, human, tools, financial, to increase business throughput and profitability, and to remove wastes, bottlenecks in the processes. What are the origins of Kanban? The three systems which historically built the origins of the Kanban framework have one significant common aspect. When it comes to production planning, they all have chosen pull modus operandi over push. What is push modus operandi in production planning? With push modus operandi, the supply center keeps on producing and delivering parts regardless of the moment the demand center consumes them. What is pull modus operandi in production planning? With pull modus operandi, the supply center produces and delivers parts based on requests coming from the demand center. A crucial element of the success with a push-based production scheduling is the competence of the demand forecasts, so that the supply center produces and delivers parts without causing under or over inventory in the demand center. Kanban, on the contrary, establishes a method where the pull comes from the demand center, and products or components are just in time, JIT, manufactured based on demand. Production, delivery, resupply, and replenishment are all determined based on actual client needs. Although it's a challenge, done correctly, this approach optimizes the use of resources needed both in supply and demand centers, whereas it makes inventory management almost obsolete. Now let's discuss the origins of the Kanban framework, the three processes which constructed its foundation. Kanban 2 bin system for shelf stocking. 2 bin system stems from the most basic visual stock replenishment signaling system, an empty box. Factories in the United Kingdom initially set up this process to produce Spitfires throughout the Second World War. Toyota analyzed processes in supermarkets during the 1940s to identify diverse shelf stocking strategies for their own factory floor. In a supermarket, consumers typically buy what they require at the needed time with the desired quantities. Furthermore, a supermarket builds its stocks for what it anticipates to sell in a given time frame. Clients usually only buy what they require since the future supply is insured. This observation led Toyota to see a process as a client of several preceding processes and to see the other preceding processes as a kind of store. Kanban utilizes the rate of demand to control the rate of production, passing requirements from the consumer up through the series of production and delivery process. In 1953, Toyota applied this mechanism in their main plant factory. Kanban aligns stock levels with real intake. A signal informs a supplier process to produce and provide a brand new shipment when the consumer process takes in the material. This signal is leveraged during the entire replenishment cycle to bring clarity to both the supplier and customer. Kanban 3 bin system for supply chain management. A 3 bin system links various departments or various parts of work processes. Sometimes, it even links business to its outside suppliers. A typical three-bin system should work like this. The factory places one bin where items are manufactured, the shop places another bin where parts and materials are held, and the supplier places one more bin. When the factory has no more parts of a specific type, it sends its empty bin to the shop to be refilled. The shop fills the bin and then dispatches its own freshly emptied bin to the supplier. The supplier then sends a full bin to the store. The bins function as the signal to indicate that downstream processes need more of some parts. They also offer permission to move parts from one place to another. In Kanban, absolutely nothing moves without a demand signal from a demand center. The majority of three bin systems also keep Kanban cards, or some other information sheet, in the bin specifying what the bin includes and in what quantity. When one of these bins is leaving its original center to be refilled by another party, Cards help process participants to view the role of these bins. 
Toyota 6 Rules for Kanban Toyota team has created six significant rules. Toyota 6 Rules for Kanban, which guide Kanban practitioners from the past to today. Each consumer process dispatches demands, bins and Kanban cards, to its supplier processes after it consumes its materials. Each supplier process manufactures and delivers in association with the amount and sequence of incoming demands. Items are neither manufactured nor delivered without a pending demand. The request, Kanban card related to an item, bin, is always connected to it. Supplier processes must adhere to the highest standards of quality assurance to guarantee that the delivered products are defect-free. Limiting the number of pending demands makes our process more delicate and reveals potential inefficiencies to be addressed. What are Kanban cards with Kanban card example? Kanban card template. Kanban cards are an essential element of Kanban. In fact, translated from Japanese, a Kanban means a visual, gun, card, ban. Kanban cards imply the requirement to move products within a production center or to move materials from an external provider into the production facility. Therefore, the Kanban card is a message that signals the depletion of an item, parts, or inventory. When a Kanban card is obtained, the card, Kanban, activates replenishment of that product, part, or stock. So the consumption center drives demand for more production, and the Kanban card signals a request for more items. In summary, Kanban cards help produce a demand-driven system. Supporters of lean movement extensively hold demand-driven systems result in much faster turnarounds in production and end-user delivery. Lower stock levels help companies carry out these systems much more competitive. That enables companies to use their available resources optimally. Most Kanban cards consist of a minimum of the following Kanban card template. Kanban card example, while the specific details included on a Kanban card example can differ from one system to another. Part description, part item number, an identifying barcode or QR code, the number of parts to be ordered, produced or transported, routing info, associated upstream and downstream processes, location information, lead time, supplier, the accountable individual mostly a coordinator, the order date, the due date, type of container, order of containers, for example, Kanban card 2 of 4, cards are usually fixed to a container, efficiently turning a bin into a Kanban, in other cases, a Kanban card is temporarily attached to shelves of bins, these Kanban cards, signal cards, are an integral part of a Kanban system to manage inventory, a Kanban card must be treated like a highly regulated item. Losing one can quickly close down a production line and fully interrupt the production until the missing parts are again available. What is a Kanban board with Kanban board example? Kanban board template. Kanban board is among the devices which are utilized to apply the Kanban process. Kanban board can be used to handle operations and matters in professional as well as in personal domains. Kanban boards creatively illustrate operations at its several phases of the Kanban framework. It utilizes cards to instantiate task items and also columns to illustrate each stage of an operational Kanban process. Kanban cards move from left to right on a Kanban board to help teams coordinate their workflow and visualize the progress of their tasks. A Kanban board might be separated in two horizontally parallel swim lanes to divide various types of works performed by different teams. Kanban boards are also utilized in knowledge works, software engineering, project management, program management, as well as in the manufacturing processes. In the abstract level, a Kanban board has the following columns to demonstrate the phases of a Kanban card, work item, waiting, to do, in progress, doing, completed, done. The naming convention and other columns can be customized based on the stages of a given workflow operated by a Kanban team. More comprehensive Kanban boards can be designed to partition in progress, doing, work into numerous other columns to depict the workflow across all units that are interacting with this work. For instance, in a software engineering organization, in progress column can be roughly divided into analysis, design, development, test and delivery columns. Kanban boards, depending on the workflow for which they are utilized, can differ substantially. A Kanban board could visualize various types of Kanban cards, features, user stories, defects, Extra columns identifying workflow phases, explicit policies regulations about how to use the Kanban board, and definition of done-off phases, swim lanes. 
rows across multiple columns to group user stories by features or defects by products and components. The primary goal is to make an entire workflow visible and understandable to all working participants and stakeholders of the workflow. The Kanban board template depicted on the next page represents a software delivery process on a Kanban board. Let's pay attention to the following characteristics of this Kanban board example. It highlights the tasks of the software development team including epics and user stories. The values circled below column headings specify the maximum number of Kanban cards, work in progress limit, whip limit, that can be simultaneously processed in a given phase. Below certain columns, it specifies explicit policies, which are also known as done rules. It encompasses our Kanban workflow management feature to divide certain columns as ready and in progress. The whip limit applies to both subcolumns to ensure that the associated teams and workflow stages are not overwhelmed due to excessive number of tasks. Kanban cards, on a single column, phase of workflow. Kanban board example for software engineering, source, Andy Carmichael, Wikipedia. What is a Kanban system? Kanban development methodology. Kanban system, Kanban development methodology, is a framework that intends to implement the flow of work workflow, through handling requirements along with available capacity. Furthermore, Kanban development methodology aims to improve the operations of a workflow by removing system-level bottlenecks of the workflow. In a Kanban system, Kanban board and Kanban cards provide Kanban team members and workflow stakeholders, an overview of work progress, as well as a guideline on how the work gets done from its beginning to its end. A Kanban card, work item, is only pulled as much as the work in progress limit, whip limit of a Kanban board column allows, instead of a Kanban card is arbitrarily pushed to the next phase of the Kanban system. A Kanban system delivers a graphical process operations system to enable monitoring and increase decision making capability about individual phases of the workflow. That is especially important for knowledge work and software development, which require ultimate transparency about what works well and what doesn't. So Kanban teams identify where the bottlenecks are and how to fix them. A Kanban system, Kanban development method, in software development and software engineering is frequently used in combination with other software development and delivery frameworks such as Scrum and DevOps. Kanban systems are designed to manage all types of information works, not only workflows related to software development, software delivery and software teams. Other business functions that frequently use Kanban development methodology are sales, marketing, human resources, recruitment, business strategy, executive leadership, organizational transformation and many others. What is a Kanban software? Kanban board software. Numerous producers have introduced Kanban software, Kanban board software, systems often described as e-Kanban systems. This Kanban software assists in removing typical issues such as manual entry mistakes, forgotten, and lost Kanban cards. Kanban board software systems are usually incorporated into enterprise resource planning ERP systems. That allows real-time requirement signaling throughout the supply chain and enhanced transparency of workflow. Information pulled from e-Kanban systems are utilized to enhance stock levels. They enable much better tracking of provider led and replenishment times. Kanban software is a signaling system that utilizes a mix of innovation to set off the motion of workflow within a production facility or information work such as software engineering. Electronic Kanban, e-Kanban varies from conventional Kanban in using technology by substituting standard components like Kanban cards with barcodes, electronic Kanban cards, and electronic messages like email or electronic information exchange. Kanban software typically utilizes internet infrastructure as a medium to route messages. Furthermore, most of the popular Kanban tools or Kanban board tools for project management do rely on internet communication too. These Kanban tools or Kanban board tools are primarily managed software as a service, SH, solutions hosted and maintained by their respective vendors on public cloud computing systems. They enable Kanban teams and their stakeholders to have real-time visibility of their inventory levels or status of their information work. A Kanban board software system typically marks stock with barcodes or tasks with e-Kanban cards. Kanban team members can scan or manually move them at different phases of the production or the delivery of information work to signal use. 
These scans or manual moves pass on messages to internal external parties to make sure the restocking of items or bringing new work items into the workflow of information work. What is a Kanban tool? Kanban board tool, for project management. A Kanban board tool, Kanban tool, for project management is going to give you a fantastic clarity and transparency of the progress and bottlenecks of your projects. Kanban cards, colors, swim lanes, tags, and due dates will assist you in composing your work on your digital Kanban board software. You will have the ability to analyze and continuously improve your processes to increase business efficiency and reduce wastes. Below are some of the Kanban board tools for project management. International Scrum Institute does not testify the fit or performance of any of these Kanban tools for your own project and business. However, we can confirm that we have a pleasant experience with Trello mentioned in this list. Asana boards, Azure DevOps server, to administer Kanban workflows among distributed teams, CAA Technologies Rally, to manage software projects with pull-based lean planning tools, Jira Kanban boards, Miesta Task Kanban application, Microsoft Planner, part of Microsoft Office 365, Notion app, Projector and BCS, Kanban board and cards for software development and software maintenance teams, Trello, Kanban board tool and electronic Kanban cards for project management, Tulip, open source application for software engineering teams, Dual project, project and program management software based on Kanban, Kanban board tool, Kanban tool, for project management, source, Trello. What is a Kanban certification? Kanban certification has been granting tremendous advantages to millions of Kanban experts until today. Therefore, there is no reason that you won't join these skillful men and women who promoted their careers and professional abilities with the help of the Kanban framework. Kanban certification definition. A Kanban certification is the attestation of your proficiency in the Kanban operations management as well as in the Kanban software development and delivery framework, Kanban certification recognizes your expressed knowledge and distinguished expertise in the Kanban framework after an official multiple choice test examination. If you're still curious, I would love to reassure you that you can no longer envision a flourishing career without holding a Kanban certification. It's regardless of your position, power, and expertise in knowledge work and information technology ecosystems. You even don't need to be an IT expert anymore to know what Kanban is, how Kanban works, and get a Kanban certification. Regardless of what you're doing for a living, and regardless you belong to an IT department or not, there is an inherent and undeniable truth. Your duties and acknowledged market power you've been offering for your business are reliant on and interrelated to information work, software, Kanban framework and Kanban principles. Moreover, Due to the transformation of conventional enterprise types into software as a service, SH, forced companies or so-called digitalization journey, it's no longer a deliberate choice for any trained expert in or outside the IT department to get certified as a Kanban expert. However, it's a necessity now to get a Kanban certification. What are Kanban expert and Kanban developer certifications? And why is it important for your career? The primary function of a certified Kanban expert or certified Kanban developer is to ensure flawless foundation, adequate and sound development, and constant refinement of Kanban practices in a Kanban organization and its Kanban teams. Hence, the proficiency and viewpoint of all team members in a Kanban system and how well they fit their Kanban teams are essential. These fundamental factors usually determine the maturity level and business throughput of a Kanban organization. Whether you belong to a Kanban team or you cooperate and operate together with other Kanban organizations, you need to have a clear understanding of Kanban. Certified Kanban expert or certified Kanban developer certification programs will teach you how and what makes the Kanban framework far more efficient to work with than many other operational management, software development, and delivery processes. Accordingly, regardless you're an IT, software, technology practitioner, leader, manager or not, every professional at this current digitalization age, when software and everything around it are kings, is highly recommended to become a certified Kanban expert or certified Kanban developer. What is a Kanban executive certification? Certified Kanban executive is the person accountable for fulfilling the desired and declared project goals. Key responsibilities of a Kanban executive involve building transparent and achievable project goals and facilitating the development of project requirements. 
a Kanban executive also manages the pressure of the project management triangle, which are the cost, the schedule, the scope to accomplish remarkable performance, and quality. A certified Kanban executive is often a client representative. Kanban executive needs to discover and aid the implementation of client requirements, based on expectations of the business stakeholders or the clients he or she is representing. Kanban executive is the bridging passage between the Kanban development Kanban delivery teams and their business sponsors. Thus, a Kanban executive has a good knowledge of the industry he or she is navigating. That's essential to understand and arbitrate the expectations, problems, and progress with both the Kanban delivery teams and clients. Kanban executives should possess a strength to adjust to the various internal procedures of the contracting parties. They form close collaboration with the nominated representatives of both business and technology stakeholders. That's our gain essential in assuring that the critical issues related to expenses, plans, deliverables, and quality can be efficiently resolved, so that, the Kanban team can delight the business owner, client, with their throughput. In summary, the title and name Certified Kanban Executive describes the person who is given the liability to complete a project. Kanban executives are persons with full accountability for their projects. They have the required level of authority to deliver the planned project objectives within the project budget, on time, and with the highest possible quality. What is a Kanban workflow? Kanban workflow definition. All work a Kanban team performs and delivers from the conception of their product until the end of the product's life cycle builds the Kanban team's workflow. And yet, the reliability, repeatability, and improvement of any process are not only based on the actual work delivered, but also they are based on the agreed norms of how the work is performed, how the work flows. Kanban Workflow Definition A Kanban workflow defines explicit policies and principles, followed by the Kanban team. Its main objective is to represent the rules and procedures of work while the work is flowing across different stages of its development and delivery cycle. It's important to understand that the Kanban team cannot be imposed to use a specific workflow defined by their business stakeholders. And yet, Kanban teams should bear in mind expectations from business units in upstream and downstream work centers to contribute the bottom line of their organizations. Therefore, the game plan to build and improve a Kanban workflow requires continuous collaboration between Kanban delivery teams and their associated counterparts at surrounding work centers. The Kanban framework administers, plans, and operates the Kanban workflow by using a Kanban board. Thus, the work in progress, WIP, limits for development and delivery steps offer immediate feedback loops. These feedback loops enable a Kanban team to monitor, address, and follow up on issues of its Kanban workflow. A clear Kanban workflow on a Kanban board, source, University of Aulu, Finland. What are key metrics to manage a Kanban workflow? You can only improve what you are focusing on. Key Kanban metrics you choose to assess the performance of your Kanban workflow are not an exception to this critical rule. It is essential that you know the key Kanban metrics to manage your Kanban workflow, so you can enhance the business throughput and reduce the wastes of your Kanban team in this process. Here are some key Kanban metrics you should be continuously monitoring as part of your initiative to improve your Kanban workflow. Team throughput. The number of Kanban cards the Kanban team delivers in their Kanban workflow in a given unit time interval. Work in progress, WIP, the number of Kanban cards in work in progress state at different stages of development and delivery process. Kanban workflow, lead time, the amount of time a Kanban card spends in Kanban workflow from the moment business stakeholders request it until it is successfully delivered. Cycle time. The amount of time a Kanban card spends in Kanban workflow from the moment the Kanban team starts working on it until the Kanban team finishes its tasks for the given card. Cycle time, work in progress, WIP, team throughput are interrelated by Little's Law. Little's Law states that, cycle time equals work in progress, WIP, team throughput. Little's Law guides us to properly administer, set client expectations, and continuously improve the Kanban workflow. Little's Law shows the correlation between the three key Kanban workflow metrics. Changing one of these metrics will have an impact on the other two metrics. For instance, to accomplish a reduction in cycle time, work in progress, WIP, must decrease, or the team throughput must increase. Work item age, the amount of time a Kanban card in work in progress state spends in the Kanban workflow from the moment the Kanban team starts working it until the moment of measurement. Problems, impediments, 
The number of Kanban cards in the Kanban workflow that cannot be processed or delivered due to blocking dependencies, planning, or all other types of errors. The excellent point about Kanban metrics is that you can determine the length of your feedback loop, based on how frequently you want to analyze your metrics and make changes in your Kanban workflow. A long feedback loop indicates that your process improvement will be slow. A short feedback loop suggests that your process may not have sufficient time to stabilize between each change. The length of the feedback loop in which you observe your metrics is one of the items you can experiment to. What are key Kanban practices? Key Kanban practices introduced in this section are going to guide towards the optimal operations of the Kanban framework. Following six key Kanban practices, core Kanban practices, need to be leveraged to execute the Kanban framework successfully. Visualize your workflow with Kanban. You can analyze, improve, and control your Kanban process by continually measuring it, and making it visible to your entire Kanban team and business stakeholders. Limit work in progress. WIP. With Kanban, limit the amount of work in progress at every step of your development and delivery processes. Thus, you continuously generate business value in shorter lead times and cycle times. Make Kanban policies explicit. Rules and norms of your Kanban process need to be agreed in consensus, clearly defined, and publicized. When all Kanban team members are familiar with explicit principles and policies, and their joint business goals, then they can make decisions to bring your project in the correct direction. Manage Kanban workflow. Kanban focuses on managing the work processes to make the Kanban workflow robust, reliable, and fast, rather than focusing on keeping people busy. Implement Kanban feedback loops. Feedback loops to measure outcomes of the Kanban process. Macro-level feedback, and its associated steps. Micro-level feedback, which led to deliverables will provide the required input for continuous improvement. Improve Kanban collaboratively, evolve Kanban experimentally. The Kanban process suggests a fact-based and collaborative approach in which everyone's opinion is counted. Kanban team members have room to experiment, make mistakes, assess, and learn from them. They will excel in their process, and finally their business outcomes. Visualize your workflow with Kanban. Let's talk about the significance of visual components in our lives. Human beings love visual elements. Our brains capture more information from one single picture than multiple pages of texts. Furthermore, we can process visual elements far faster than words. 30% of our brain neurons participate in the task of visual perception. In contrast, only 8% of brain neurons are active for hearing, and 3% of them are functioning for our touching sense. Furthermore, when we look at visual components, our brains are able to process numerous pieces of information concurrently. Our brains can process visual elements around 60,000 times faster than it processes textual elements. Visual data such as images, graphics, illustrations, infographics are a significant relief for our brain in information overload of our personal and business lives. The reason behind much faster and efficient visual processing is pretty simple. Threats in the ancient world were visible things, not memorandums protocols or other documents. The Kanban framework utilizes the Kanban board to make its workflow visible and transparent. The way the Kanban board was set should enable proper planning, visualization, delivery of work, the continuous improvement of the workflow, and the individual performance of Kanban team members. How you visualize your Kanban workflow. Visualization of your workflow and processes can become quite a daunting task. That is especially true if your organization used to tolerate intransparent work among different silos of matrix organizational structure so far. Some people can be quickly frustrated by the number of activities that goes into building your product or service. They may think that it's not very easy to visualize their workflows in the first place, so they give up, doing the work, but not being able to visualize it, go and figure. Nonetheless. The following four steps will help you visualize your workflow and build your first Kanban board. Step 1. Identify the scope of your process you would like to visualize. Step 2. List the steps that get into your process, which creates outcomes such as products and services. Step 3. Transform steps of your process into lanes of your Kanban board. Step 4. Get back to work, experiment with, visualize and improve your Kanban workflow. During this process, Bear in mind that your visualization should cover the following items. 
acceptance criteria of business demands coming from the upstream work center before they can be taken into the Kanban workflow, explicit policies which are similar to definition of DUNS, DOD. These will guide the Kanban team while their works flow from the left side to the right side of their Kanban board throughout various steps of development and delivery phase. Explicit policies to limit work in progress, with definition of done, dot of Kanban team's deliverables before they can be dispatched to the downstream work center. Visualize your Kanban workflow with Kanban board. The Kanban framework uses the Kanban board to visualize the workflow. Limit work in progress, whip, with Kanban. Why do we need a definition of work in progress, WIP, limit in Kanban? Because Kanban is a pool system. That means each step of the Kanban process pulls tasks for processing depending on their available capacity. In contrast, in a push system, the demand centers push tasks and initiate their starts. This maximum available capacity of a Kanban team, which is responsible for a specific step, corresponds to work in progress, WIP, limit in Kanban. Limiting work in progress, WIP, comes from efficient lean manufacturing ideas. Kanban advocates the minimization of work in progress items at every step of the production phase. That enables quicker problem resolution, faster and more optimal stabilization of processes, and lower wastes. Over the years, it has been proven that smaller batch sizes of work enabled by limiting work in progress, WIP, made various other benefits possible for Kanban teams such as building ownership of their work, system thinking, and innovative mindsets. Work in progress, WIP, limit of Kanban provides two benefits in managing disorder. Focus of Kanban team, WIP limits restrict the number of tasks influenced by altering priorities and demands. That saves Kanban teams from abandoning their ongoing tasks. Improvement of Kanban process. A Kanban team cannot finish its work quicker than its slowest step. Therefore WIP limits can quickly show the Kanban team whether specific steps are bottlenecks or the other steps are over-optimized. This input can be rapidly turned into measures to improve the overall performance of the Kanban process. Make Kanban policies explicit. The goal of explicit Kanban policies is to induce certainty and increase team performance and effectiveness. A certified Kanban executive is not interested in the Kanban team being busy. The intention and ambition of a project manager, including a Kanban project manager, are for the Kanban team to be occupied with the proper activities, done correctly, and on time to generate the expected business outcomes. A Kanban board makes processes and policies explicit. By viewing the Kanban board, the Kanban team and their stakeholders can build a proper understanding of how their Kanban workflow works and the status of work in progress, WIP, work. Declaring Kanban policies explicitly clears the Kanban team's mind. Explicit Kanban policies should reflect what is important. They define which tasks the Kanban team can willingly ignore, so that they can focus on essential activities. What trade-offs in costs, speed, and quality, the Kanban team is ready to allow and under what conditions. Here are some examples of explicit Kanban policies. Make the Kanban team members familiar with the flow of work. Create definition of DUNS. Dodd, with their associated quality assurance checks in macro, workflow, and micro, workflow steps, levels, how to handle the backlog, who can add items, who can prioritize, and how, how to handle new requirements from stakeholders, how to handle scope creep, how to handle impediments and situations when Kanban team members are blocked from doing their work, how to handle defects from work delivered in the past, manage Kanban workflow. Kanban experts and Kanban executives are in charge of the active management of their Kanban workflow. It's essential to be able to limit the number of Kanban cards located at specific steps of Kanban workflow. Yet, that's not enough to enable the flow, definition, management of Kanban workflow. All tasks performed to enable or improve the Kanban workflow can be defined as activities to manage Kanban workflows. Some of these activities are Kanban cards are pulled to a step of a workflow at the same rate as they're completed and leave. Kanban cards are never left to gain high work item ages without being processed by the Kanban team. Kanban team shifts priorities to handle several quid of blocked Kanban cards proactively. Kanban team take it seriously to meet their service level expectations, slow, and they feel comfortable to give just in time, JIT, decisions while they do the work to proactively manage their workflow. Kanban team tracks their metrics, makes them transparent to their upstream and downstream work centers as well. 
In this way, valuable feedback can be collected from surrounding teams whose workflows are interrelated to the workflow of the Kanban team. Work in progress, WIP, limits can be experimented and adjusted as well with consensus among Kanban experts and Kanban project managers. And yet, adjusting WIP cannot be imposed by higher level management or leadership. Implement Kanban feedback loops, demands from our business stakeholders get more challenging. Those demands change not only in terms of functional and non-function features but also their requirements related to time, budget, and quality. To fulfill clients' needs and make them happy, our Kanban teams must enable quick, constant, and secure feedback loops from right to left in our Kanban workflow. These feedback loops enable Kanban teams to promptly resolve impediments while they are tiny, inexpensive, and straightforward to eliminate. Feedback loops create an enterprise knowledge practice while a Kanban team performs its tasks. When errors occur, a Kanban team takes them as chances to gain new knowledge and increase the quality of software products and services they provide. Why does a Kanban team require built-in quality assurance by Kanban feedback loops? In software engineering, you are so far pretty clear that in a complex system, no one can know everything. Even doing the same tasks twice does not yield the same results. Because this level of ambiguity of results is not sustainable in any market, companies build control and reliance on quality assurance. Nonetheless, all these devices are not sufficient enough to circumvent errors and incidents. Therefore, building an enterprise culture that makes products and services with built-in quality begins by acknowledging errors and deploying feedback loops to highlight them. Identify errors in Kanban workflow while they happen. If the feedback mechanism in Kanban workflow is late and rare, it is also slow and costly to counteract unwanted results. The goal of our Kanban team is to build fast feedback loops. When the work moves from left to right in Kanban workflow, it needs to continually provide feedback from right to left. Doing work with quality in your Kanban organization is all about building fast and reliable feedback loops. When an issue happens, the Kanban team identifies it while it is the first time occurring in your Kanban workflow. Kanban team promptly fixes it, and the team continuously verifies the correlation between client expectations and the deliverables, so the Kanban team can fulfill these expectations and satisfy its clients. Kanban feedback cycles do not only make it possible to remove impediments quickly, but they also help the Kanban team to learn from them and prevent those errors from happening in the future again. Never shift quality control decisions away from the Kanban team. Pushing decisions about quality controls away from the Kanban team where the actual work is performed decreases quality, extends delivery lead times, reduces the health of feedback between cause and effect, and ultimately reduces the ability of your Kanban team to learn from their mistakes. Kanban team members should be identifying, learning, fixing, and teaching about errors in their area of influence, pair programming, peer reviews, automated testing, and inspection of code check-ins. Internal checkpoints. Widespread demonstration should make quality assurance the accountability of the Kanban team instead of the sole liability of a dedicated and external quality assurance department. Improve Kanban collaboratively, evolve Kanban experimentally. A Kanban team needs to build a self diagnostics, self learning, and self improvement culture based on true collaboration and open minded experimentation. Addressing impediments for a Kanban team is not an exceptional state of work. Kanban doesn't treat errors as ill exceptions that shouldn't have happened in the first place. Errors are accepted part of daily practice to contribute to the continuous learning and improvement journey of your Kanban organization and your overall enterprise. A Kanban team multiplies the effects of these solutions for the problems it solves, by making them transparent, available, and easily accessible within the entire Kanban organization. Instead of finger-pointing, accusing, and humiliating the ones who create problems, a Kanban team values actions to make impediments visible. Team members encourage organizational learnings from errors and inefficiencies, so everyone in the Kanban company can also discover and benefit from these obstacles, resolutions, and know-how. When members of a Kanban company feel safe about providing particulars about their errors, they willingly go the extra distance and spend a lot of drive to make sure that a comparable problem will not occur again in their work center and other work centers of their value stream. If engineers are penalized or even if they perceive that they are penalized when they make mistakes, then they will be worried about making mistakes. The end effects will be, they perform less activity to make fewer mistakes, they are not open about their work, 
difficulties, and the results. They are not incentivized to transform resolutions of difficulties into organizational learning. It is guaranteed that the identical or related problem will repeatedly occur because nobody ever uses time and drive to learn, distribute, and inform about issues and their resolutions and make them visible. It is essential that Kanban team members and their respective business stakeholders involved in an incident completely accept this no blame, we are here to learn model. Many organizations maintain considerable trouble to create such safe working environments. The FAA, for instance, has an aviation safety reporting system, how pilots who make mistakes can get protection from regulative penalty if they choose to record those incidents on their own. Your Kanban organization should build such mechanisms to develop a transparent work and error culture. Evolve your Kanban process and business result experimentally. Before a Kanban team builds a complete product and shares its best practices towards the rest of the overall Kanban organization, Kanban team members should ask, why should I make this? Is this deserving my time and resources? You need to create and run the fastest and cheapest trials reasonable to verify if your ideas to improve processes, products, and features meet your expected business outcomes. Instead of solely relying on your stomach and the best practices you and your Kanban team have been acquiring and monitoring so far, the focus must be getting actual people in the actual world to perform in your experiments. Kanban executives and their business stakeholders should see their product and feature ideas as well as their plans to improve their use of the Kanban process as hypotheses to be validated. These hypotheses can be comprehensively planned, developed, and delivered only after they are rationally proven to be good ideas and business cases. Is Kanban Agile Scrum? Kanban in Agile? Kanban with Scrum? Constraints are what makes a process. One can relate tools by studying how many various instructions they provide. A prescriptive tool stands for more instructions to regard, and an adaptive tool stands for fewer instructions to regard. A 100% prescriptive tool dictates that you don't have to give any decisions, and the tool has got instructions and rules for everything. On the other hand, a 100% adaptive tool lets you and your team do whatever you want because there are no instructions or restrictions. It is very evident that both of these extremes are not practical in engineering and business. Agile processes are often referred to as lightweight processes, mainly because they are relatively less prescriptive compared to other conventional software development frameworks. Keep in mind that the first and foremost principle of the Agile Manifesto favors individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Kanban and Scrum are highly adaptive processes, and yet, Kanban is more adaptive because Scrum dictates more limitations and instructions, thus it's relatively less flexible than Kanban. As an example Scrum designates time box development cycles, sprints, whereas there are no time box iterations in Kanban. The value of a tool or process comes from how it limits your options while it's still giving you sufficient opportunities to build with quality, speed, and creativity. Compare tools to get best out of them, not to judge them. Similar to all other tools and processes, neither the Kanban framework nor the Scrum framework is perfect. There is never a one-size-fits-all solution. These processes won't necessarily indicate everything that you have to do to be successful with your project. They merely present specific principles, instructions, and restrictions. As examples, Scrum compels you to run time box sprints with cross-functional teams, and Kanban compels you to employ visible boards and only restricts the extent of your work in progress, WIP, tasks. One can mix the success or failure of projects with the quality of tools and processes. It's essential to understand that, a project can deliver great results because of the fantastic tools and processes. A project can deliver great results despite the suboptimal and or unfit tools and processes. A project can deliver poor results because of the suboptimal and or unfit tools and processes. A project can deliver poor results despite the fantastic tools and processes. Therefore, as trained and paid professionals, we ought to compare tools and processes to understand them better, not to judge them. Pay explicit attention and not to follow a process no matter what your given circumstances are. Only follow the path to build the best business value for your given project. Keep on continuously learning and adapting whenever necessary. Don't limit your organization to one tool. That brings to the necessity of combining and adapting the tools as we require them. Most Kanban and Scrum teams employ principles from XP Extreme Programming. Most Kanban teams practice daily stand-up meetings, which is a Scrum practice. Sprint backlog from Scrum Concept has been borrowed from Kanban boards. 
Don't limit your organization to only one tool. Test and find out whatever works for you. Kanban vs Scrum, Kanban vs Agile Scrum. Here is our detailed comparison for Kanban vs Scrum. Let's get started with Kanban vs Scrum similarities first. Similarities, Kanban vs Scrum. Kanban and Scrum are both lean as well as agile. Kanban and Scrum make use of pull organization instead of push organization. Kanban and Scrum both limit work in progress. Whip. Kanban and Scrum both utilize transparency to drive process renovation. Kanban and Scrum both concentrate on providing releasable software applications. Kanban and Scrum both function in self-organizing team structures. Kanban and Scrum both place value for splitting the requirements into smaller and digestible work items. Kanban and Scrum both support a release strategy that is continually enhancing based on empirical metrics. With both Kanban and Scrum, the teams choose how to manage the delegations in their small groups. Their duty and mission are to maintain the value stream efficiently flowing to their clients, so they can offer prompt responses to changing circumstances while they're building competitive products and services in reasonable budgets. Differences, Kanban vs Scrum. A detailed comparison to see differences between Kanban and Scrum. See the table from the ebook. Scrum vs Kanban events Scrum practices various conventional events, rituals, Scrum events and how they are replaced in Kanban are explained below. See the table from the ebook. Problems without Kanban. Here in this section, we want to briefly touch to typical challenges of an information work ecosystem that doesn't take the benefits of the Kanban framework. A negligent employee can be rewarded for speed, while he or she is causing expensive impediments due to incomplete deliverables. Teams participate in an extreme number of meetings concerning planning and processes. Delivery dates shift as requirements change. Projects are rescheduled continuously, which requires extra planning and meetings. Quality goes unchecked for weeks or months, which produces a large volume of rework to fulfill even minimum quality expectations from stakeholders. Teams spend substantial time doing tasks that are unassociated to providing value to their clients. Problems age for months, if not years, before they are discovered, understood, and rectified. These are only a few of downward spirals and vicious cycles almost every business and every professional live with. Gartner estimates that companies worldwide waste yearly about 600 billion USD for non-budgeted and non-scheduled IT maintenance work to keep revenue-generating IT systems up and running. To express this number with digits to see how it looks like, $600 billion. As it should be apparent for you until this moment, this level of waste in a highly cognitive field such as information work and information technology is not easy to grasp. That is a great challenge to tackle. Kanban has some answers for some organizations, maybe for your organization too. Given that, your organization is ready to explore, learn, and change transparently. Solution with Kanban. Kanban is an uncomplicated and easy-to-learn project control framework that was inspired from Toyota's just-in-time, JIT, scheduling methodology. Kanban allows organizations to focus with all their time and resources on delivering business value to their clients rather than spending time and resources for oppressive tasks for project administration. Kanban has the following advantages compared to other mainstream project management methodologies. Kanban reflects project workflow clearly. Highlights bottlenecks of workflow the day they happen. Kanban ensures that Kanban team members resolve impediments immediately rather than piling them up before the workflow comes out of control state. Kanban enforces quality standards at each step of the workflow. Kanban ensures that Kanban team members are not allowed to prematurely close tasks. Kanban limits work in progress, clearing Kanban members to change their work contexts continually. Kanban has only on-demand basis planning meetings to focus on the real business results. Kanban service level expectation, slang, Kanban classes of service. Kanban is a proven framework to establish reliable Kanban service level expectations, SLES, also called Kanban classes of services. What Kanban does is to simplify project management, reduce time spent on unproductive meetings, bottlenecks, and rework. It enables organizations to command their quality goals better and make their throughput more predictable and consistent over time. Like all other processes, new Kanban teams need three to five weeks to adapt, and four to six months to stabilize their Kanban service level expectations. Sle risks of getting started with the Kanban framework, changes come with risks. Kanban is no exception. The risks with Kanban in their plans for mitigation. 
How do you start with Kanban? Step-by-step -step guide in six steps. Now the next logical question in your mind might be how you can get started with Kanban. Here is a quick recipe. Step 1. Conduct a Kanban workshop. Talk to your team first. Highlight problems and pain points your team is dealing with and how Kanban can help you out. Before anyone else, you need buy-in from your own team members. Step 2. Address stakeholders. Talk to your stakeholders. Make for them clear about the necessity of change. Let them build a clear vision about how this change would impact their collaboration with your team and how those will benefit them. Remember, no vision means no action and trust on their part. Comfort your stakeholders that this would be a no-string-attached experiment in the first place to see if Kanban can be a good fit for the organization. Step 3. Begin with what you do now. Avoid making massive changes and big bangs with particular ways you deliver your work. If you use specific tools to prepare and deliver your information work, stick to these while you're at the early stages of your Kanban adoption. Don't make multiple changes for the sake of simplicity and not clouding the results of your Kanban adoption. Avoid multiple variables changing simultaneously. Follow your routine and start using the Kanban framework as your scheduling, tracking, and monitoring tool. Step 4. Target incremental change with Kanban. All other changes, great ideas for improvement, and optimization of your performance come one step at a time. Your first goal is to establish and stabilize the reliable work in progress, WIP, limits for each step of your workflow. That will ultimately enable you to build, tune, and verify your Kanban service level expectations, SLES. Thus, your stakeholders will have a clear view of when they should expect deliverables from your Kanban team for a given requirement. Once this is accomplished, you can experiment with other dimensions of your delivery process, tools, and techniques to further optimize and improve the performance of your Kanban team. Step 5. Respect the current roles and responsibilities. You need to show the same care to the roles and responsibilities of your people as you show to the processes, especially at the early stages of your Kanban adoption. Avoid moving and shifting roles and responsibilities of your Kanban team members. Let them first learn and digest the new way of executing their projects, while they're still doing what they used to do day to day before Kanban adoption. Once this is established, required changes for roles and responsibilities will be self-evident and acceptable for everyone to honor desired WIP limits and Kanban service level expectations, SLES. Step 6. Motivate acts of leadership with Kanban at all levels. Help your Kanban team members own their successes, but also their failures. Make them allies of business and your business goals. Please encourage them to learn from, teach, and inspire each other. Last but not least, don't ignore the importance of getting buy-in from your own leadership, which will ultimately play a decent role in making or breaking your successful Kanban initiative. Scaled Kanban, Scaling Kanban, Scaling Kanban, Scaled Kanban, involves no more than doing more further of the Kanban framework you have learned so far. Here are some guidelines which will lead you when your organization comes to a stage in which you require to scale your Kanban initiative. Scaled Kanban Leadership for any new system or control mechanism to live, there needs to be someone accountable for taking it in and retaining it in place. That is what the Kanban experts and Kanban project managers should be doing in their organizations. They should be looking after the widespread adoption of the Kanban framework in the organization and take good care of it. Like any other process, Kanban won't also self-maintain itself. Scaled Kanban Ownership Elevating ownership stands for getting the team members to engage in building their Kanban boards because their association with it will be more connected and better encouraged by this. If the Kanban board comes from Kanban team members and not from the higher level management, it makes better sense for them to want to pursue and use it regularly. That primarily seeds the perception of control and self-organization to the work environment. Scaling Kanban is not always straightforward, but it is manageable. As observed in many different instances, bear in mind that the overall objective for a scaled Kanban initiative is the improvement of the organization-wide processes. Relatively more straightforward methods to learn and use, such as Kanban and Scrum, can bring more clarity and efficiency to organizations, given they are applied with discipline systematically. Scaled Kanban Discipline If your team has been using Kanban for some time, you and your team have already figured out that working with Kanban takes up persistent and disciplined effort. That will remain intact when expanding the Kanban framework to the level of the entire organization. Kanban boards need modifications and enhancements as the process changes and evolves. 
global and interdependent policies across multiple teams need constant monitoring, modifications, and optimizations. Your aim is to make sure that the comparable practices apply to the bigger picture, which worked in a smaller Kanban organization. That is your starting point for a scaled Kanban organization. The rest is continuous fine-tuning. Scaled Kanban levels. It is vital to organize your Kanban organization in a configuration that builds small, preferably cross-functional, self-sufficient, and autonomous teams. Their sovereignty will inspire motivation, speed, and quality of work results. That will also promote their willingness to own the tasks and results. It's a reasonable idea to apply related policies and goals to different Kanban levels of your organizational workflow. Yet it would be best if you still assured a certain degree of autonomy so that teams can forge their own workflows. Scaled Kanban Policies Adapt your Kanban policies to the bigger picture of your organization. Remember to preserve your original Kanban policies, which made your initial Kanban initiative successful in the first place. With the growth of your Kanban organization, you need to keep the emerging teams small and self-sufficient, so they will have the ability to quickly form their micro-policies and adapt to the policies from the macro level of your organization. It is the global Kanban culture that you want to keep persistent across all levels of your organization. The connection and collaboration between micro-Kanban teams that build your overall Kanban organization will play a massive role in making your scaled Kanban initiative a success. Lessons learned from Kanban while work in progress, whip, reduces, bottlenecks, and impediments in upstream and downstream processes expose themselves. Observe them and help your neighbor work centers fix them. Your Kanban board will change and evolve while you move on. Don't get with a certain Kanban board too much attached. Be the first one to adapt to changing circumstances, then expect others to do the same. Don't stop experimenting. Setting up your Kanban process or your Kanban board is not your objective. Your objective is continuous learning. One of the greatest benefits of information work, especially software development and delivery, is the rapid feedback loops. Exploit them. The only mistake you can do is delegate the responsibility of your dream job to the hands of others and expect them to build the greatest processes for you. Don't be afraid of errors and mistakes along the way. Keep on learning from your own mistakes and the mistakes of others. Start today with your Kanban initiative, improve, and evolve over there. Never stop experimenting. Next steps for the pursuit of growth. The life you want, the marriage you want, the family that you want, is going to be fueled by the business you build. Russell Brunson, author and CEO of ClickFunnels, How to Guarantee Your Position as a Successful Entrepreneur. I feel that it's now my job to inspire you to actually implement and execute what you have learned from this program. Let's face it, the big. Vast economy is not going to accommodate you with more opportunities and more business without you taking some serious initial steps. The economy most likely doesn't even know you exist. Up until now, you only operated as a small part of it, or you're just getting started. The government is not going to bail you out on your difficult days, and they certainly are not going to help you to advance and conquer on your entrepreneurship journey while you are setting yourself free. Something tells me that you didn't pick up this program because you are comfortable or satisfied with where you're in your career and business. Chances are you want to change or improve your career, build a side hustle, increase your level of flexibility and independence, or you want to simply have much security and more available options in life and business. Otherwise, you wouldn't have finished this program. Taking the time to pick up this program and study it suggests that you truly do want to do something different. For this, I acknowledge and congratulate you. Well done to you on getting this program. I applaud you for starting it and even more for finishing it. Now, if you want the world to give you a standing ovation, put lessons in it to work. Interestingly, one of the most effective ways of perfecting these disciplines is to help others attain success and implement these actions themselves. When people with common goals and motivations come together, they tend to learn faster and become a support system for one another. So gather a group of like-minded and highly driven people who refuse to live by the norms of the mediocre. Assemble a group to discuss this program and brainstorm it with you. Ask your family, friends, and other like-minded entrepreneurs to make this program as a team. Then help one another apply and commit to using the actions, hold one another accountable to these commitments. This is the game, and it's the most fun game that I've ever played. You now started getting the skills you need to start building your empire or make it bigger. During this journey that we've been on together through this program, we've covered a lot of things, but there are still a lot I am going to provide you. 
Everything you've learned in this program is literally the same thing we would discuss and do with you if one of my skill front advisors or I had a chance to fly to you and sit in your office. You now have access to the skills that will unlock the path of success in your business and ultimately in your life. You have just learned what took me a decade to discover and master. Tony Robbins often talks about how reading a book is like taking a decade of someone's life and compressing it down to a day. My entrepreneurial journey hasn't been all sunshine and roses. There have been many ups and downs, and I fought hard to learn all these skills in this program you have in your hands, and all other programs we have released, and we're going to release. It is my honor and privilege to be able to share them with you. I still remember the excitement as I learned each of these skills and use them for the business for the first time. Whenever I meet someone talking about our programs and skills they are learning from Skillfront, I get slightly jealous about how much fun it would be to rediscover all these skills. At this moment, you just officially became our latest Skillfront entrepreneur. I hope that you had as much fun learning as I did when I started my own journey. We will end this program now, and we will be happy to serve you again with another program. If you want to get up to the minute ideas, keep yourself informed about other skill front programs like this one, follow our pages on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. P.S. Don't forget, you're just one skill away. Thanks for learning with the skill front. I want to thank you for taking the time with our program. We hope you enjoyed studying this lecture as much as we had enjoyed while we were creating it. It would be our greatest pleasure if we managed to help you to learn a thing or two which will guide you on your own exciting entrepreneurship journey. This program is a playbook. Don't just study it once and go on with business as usual. Keep it handy and refer to it often. Having these tactics and using them hand in hand will give you strategies to grow your business and career geometrically. And with that, thank you so much once again. And I wish you all the success you can dream of. Yelizo Bugafell, Skillfront, what's coming next? If you want to get up to the minute ideas, Keep yourself informed about skill front programs like this one, follow our pages on, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Skillfront, our web address, www.skillfront.com.